When I was growing up, there were only two channels on television. The public television channel ABC and the commercial TV8. TV8 was just bits and pieces from the three city channels with some local news and ads. Every night they had a short interlude where they told you what would be screening for the night. Tonight on TV8, there's quality Australian drama in the Henderson Kids at 6.30, followed by the award-winning current affairs show... It was like a crystal ball that predicted what I would be thinking about for the next couple of hours, and also what everyone would be talking about at school the next day. A couple of hours, then next day, until the next interlude was played and the cycle repeated. The only thing that broke up the monotony was when the Tats Lotto draw would come on. My family and I would try to guess the numbers before they came out. It was a nice break from the predictability of it all. We would rarely guess correctly, but it was thrilling when it happened. 12. My favourite TV show was A Country Practice. It provided a glimpse of the sensible career options available for a person from the country. Doctor, policeman, vet, nurse, farmer, barkeep, plumber. How would the town and the country practice handle the current situation we find ourselves in? The hospital was pretty old fashioned and didn't seem equipped to deal with the demand for respirators. The town was full of older people like Esme, who was very social. How would she cope with the isolation? Cookie would have to close the pub. Questions would be asked of Sergeant Frank Gilroy and the police in general. I identified most with Molly, the environmentalist who didn't really fit in with the locals of Wanham Valley they loved her anyway. I was nine when she died. They'd filmed it in a way that I'd never seen before, as if the camera was inside her. She was looking on while her husband and child flew a kite and they looked back at her. As she closed her eyes, the camera faded to black, while her husband rushed towards her in desperation. It was like you were inside her skull. First person view, FPV. Later this would become much more common in pornography and video games, but at the time it was mind blowing. I felt like I had glimpsed my own future death. The next day at school it was all anyone could talk about. I had changed. Now, when the TV8 ad played, I knew what I would be watching for the next few hours and what I would be talking about tomorrow and that at some point in the future, well, you know. I stopped watching a country practice. Years passed. Tats Lotto machines changed but produced the same results. 19. 27. Eight. I just graduated high school and I was trying to decide what to do with my life. I wanted to study art, but everyone told me that was a bad idea financially. They told me to really think about my future. One night, I was home by myself watching television. The Tats Lotto draw came on. There was a new machine. Both it and the set seemed to be designed by the Memphis Group. The machine was laminated with the bacteria pattern designed by Atore Sotsis. Years later, someone would suggest that he may have secretly invented the fidget spinner. Who knows? The officials looked old-fashioned sitting amongst it. I began guessing the numbers, but this time it was different. It was like I could see them before they ended up in the plexiglass bit, before they were even scooped up by the red arm thing. I said them out loud. 27. 27. 27. Four. 
When it was over, I realised I had picked six regular numbers and the two SUPs in order. I didn't even know what SUPs were. I still don't. I felt euphoric. It was incredible. What were the chances? Then came a sadness as I realised this was probably the most incredible thing that would happen in my life and no one saw it. It would be all downhill from here. A slow fade to black. When my parents arrived home, I didn't tell them what had happened. I never mentioned it to anyone. The next day, I applied to art school.